Okay, in this video, I will show you guys two ways on how to differentiate this expression right here. But before you guys see the solution, please pause the video and try this yourself first. Okay, so I will demonstrate the solution now. And after the video, you have to comment down below and let me know that which one that you like more, okay? So the first way is just that we will differentiate this as how it is. Because we see that we have the square root, and then the inside here we have a fraction. So we need to know the derivative of the square root function. And we also have to use the chain rule. And we also have to know the quotient rule, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I will first write down y prime for the derivative. And we know that the derivative of a square root something is 1 over 2 square root, and then you just keep the inside as how it is, x minus 1 over x to the fourth power plus 1, like this, for now. And then the chain rule says, we have to differentiate the inside, but the inside is a quotient, so we have to use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says, we are going to first square the denominator, so let me just do that first, and put it on the bottom. So we will have x to the fourth power plus 1, square. And then for the top, we keep the bottom, which is x to the fourth power plus 1, and we multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. And then we minus, we keep the top, which is x minus 1, and then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just 4x to the third power, right? So let's just multiply by 4x to the third power, like this. And this right here is pretty much it as of the calculus step. And the rest is just pretty much algebra, right? Now we will see, for the first part, let me just write it down as 1 over, and I will put down a 2 like this. And the square root of the top and bottom, we can write this down as square root of x minus 1, and then over another square root of x to the fourth power plus 1, like that. And then for the, the second part, well, the red part, we will just multiply out the things on the top and then combine the terms. So we see that this times 1 is just that, which is x to the fourth power plus 1. And then do it carefully for the second part. Here is a minus, and we also have to multiply with 4x to the third power inside, inside. So first of all, negative x times this, right? So it's negative 4x to the fourth power, because of x times x is x to the fourth power now. So it's negative 4x to the fourth power. And then next, negative times negative 1 becomes positive, and then this times 1 is just 4x to the third power, all right? So be sure you do this times that, this times that, right? So it pretty much puts two things inside. That's the idea, right? Okay, on the top now, we will have, this is x to the fourth power minus 4x to the fourth power, so we can combine that to become negative 3x to the fourth power, and then this is the next highest power, so we will just write down plus 4x to the third power, and at the end here, we have the plus 1, right? That's the top. On the bottom, we have this, which is x to the fourth power plus 1 squared, like this. Okay, now, is there anything else that we can do? Yes, a few things. Well, actually, just one more thing. Because if you just ignore the, ignore the top, if you just look at this part, you have this times that, and... The square root of x to the fourth power plus 1, I can write this down as a fraction of power, namely the 1 half power. So if you look at this part times that, well, we can reduce the power, right? Because the bases are the same. So to do that, we pretty much just do 2 minus 1 half, right? 2 minus 1 half, and that's going to be 3 half. So this is pretty much the idea. So let me just write this down. I'm going to cancel this out and this out. And the power becomes 3 half right here, right? Because 2 minus 1 half. OK, so that's pretty much it. So I will put everything on top like this. Minus 3x to the fourth power plus 4x to the third power plus 1. 
And then on the bottom, this is go over, 2 in the front, and then let's open the square root for this one first. Square root of x minus 1 times, and this is out of it is your choice. When you have the over 2, you can write that down as a square root again, right? So if you would like, you can write this down as square root. And you still have the third power, so I can write this down as parentheses and the x to the fourth power plus 1 inside this to the third power, like that. And if you really want, because it's this times that, you can put the square roots together. So finally, I think I'll just do that for you guys. Minus 3x to the fourth power plus 4x to the third power plus 1 all over 2. And then let's open a big square root. And then this right here, you have to use the parentheses though. Right? So it's x plus 1 times this part, which is x to the fourth power plus 1 and then to the third power. Crazy, huh? Right? Because this is a pretty big expression. Okay, so that's what we have. Alright, now, what's another way to do it? Well, you see that we had to use the you know, square root function, derivative, and then the chain rule, and then the quotient rule, right? One way to avoid those kind of things is that we might be, we, we, we could try to do some algebra first. Sometimes, the more algebra that we can do in the beginning, it's easier for the differentiation steps, right? But in my opinion, this is not that bad. If you do the calculus part first, the algebra part might be more. But anyway, here is the second way. What we are going to do is, we are going to take the natural log on both sides, and this is usually referred to as the logarithmic differentiation. You take the natural log on both sides first. Because this way, on the left-hand side, we have ln y, and for this part, well, for the square root of this, right, I can just change that to the one half power, right? And ln of something to the power by the log property, we can bring this power to the front. But do not minus one. This is not calculus at all. This is just the natural log property, okay? So let me put down the one half in the front, and then we still have the ln, and we have the x minus one over x to the fourth power plus 1, like this. Well, can we even do more? Yes, because when we have a quotient inside of the ln, we can break it down into two parts, and it becomes a subtraction of two lns. So to do that, we will have ln y still stays the same. And let me focus on this part first, all right? this part in black first. ln of this over that, it becomes ln parentheses x minus 1, minus another ln, open parentheses, and x to the fourth power plus 1, like this. And don't forget we still have the 1 half in the front, so it's like 1 half, like this, right? And of course, you know you can distribute, so really, we just need to put down 1 half right here, and also another 1 half right here, right? Because you distribute, and that's pretty much all we have. Therefore, the original expression is nothing but just this. And now, we differentiate. And you might be wondering why it's not isolated anymore. It's okay, we can do implicit differentiation. So, go ahead and put down d dx to show people that we are going to differentiate this now. And derivative of y, okay, is 1 over y. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of inside. The derivative of y is exactly dy dx. But because I use y prime over here, so let me also put down y prime for the derivative notation, right? All right, so the derivative of ln y with respect to x is 1 over y times y prime. Because y is a function of x, you multiply by this. Okay, now we just do the usual derivative for this part because they are all in terms of x. Derivative of 1 half ln x minus 1. The 1 half is a constant multiple. We keep it as how it is, which is 1 half. The derivative of ln x minus 1 is 1 over x minus 1. And the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. Right? The chain rule says you multiply by the derivative right here, but you are just multiplied by 1 anyway. Doesn't really matter. And you continue minus 
And by the way, this is one way to explain why the quotient rule is a minus here, right? because of the LN property that also agrees. And if you want to see the proofs of the quotient rule by using LNs, you can check out the video. I will have that video in the description for you. Anyway, this right here, we have the 1 half. And then do the same thing. The derivative of LN of this becomes 1 over x to the fourth power plus 1. And then we multiply by the derivative inside, the chain rule tensor. The derivative of x to the fourth power plus 1 is what? It's 4x to the third power. And this right here, I think it's definitely easier in terms of the calculus step, right? In comparison with this right here. However, in the end, I don't know if this is going to give me the same results. So I will do more algebra to convince you guys that this and that are actually the same, all right? So first of all, we notice that we have 1 over y. And I want to just isolate dy dx, the y prime right here, the derivative. Therefore, let me multiply both sides by y so that this and that will cancel. And that will just get the y prime that I want, right? So let me just write down y prime. And now we have the y times this expression. Let's do some fixed. First, y is this expression, right? The original. The original <laughs> expression is that. I will just write that down again. y is square root of x minus 1 over x to the fourth power plus 1. Right? I use the square root notation again. I will put on the 1 half notation for the power. Anyway, inside here, we see well, we're just trying to combine fractions. So here we have 1 on the top and then 2 times this. Right? So it's 2 x minus 1 like this. And then minus, on the top, we just have 4x to the third power over 2 times that. And be sure you put on parentheses around the denominators. So 2 times x to the fourth power plus 1, like that, right? OK, this, of course, is not the same as that. It's OK, because I can just combine the fractions. To do that, I need to multiply this part by x to the fourth power plus 1, right? So let's put that down. And I need to have x minus 1 right here so that they will have the same denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. OK. Here we have y prime. This is, oh, actually, I'm just write down equal sign. This right here is equal to, we have this, which is square root of x minus 1 over x to the fourth power plus 1. And let's open the parentheses. And the denominators are the same now, so I can put down 2 right here. This and that for the denominator, so x minus 1 times x to the fourth power plus 1, like that. And what's on the top? Well, 1 times this is just x to the fourth power plus 1. And here we go again. Minus 4x to the third power times x. It's minus 4x to the third, sorry. It's 4x to the third power times x, right? So it's 4x to the fourth power. And then negative this times negative 1 becomes plus 4x to the third power. So if you combine the terms, this and that is minus 3x to the fourth power. And you write down plus 4x to the third power. And then you put down plus 1. Wow, look at that. Isn't this beautiful? This is almost the same as that, but not quite. So. What can we do next to make this better? Well, maybe I want to use one half power notation again, right? I'll fix the. I'll change that to the uh, the radical notation later. On. And because earlier we have the x minus one, right? So I can write this down as the one half power here, and likewise I can write this down as the one half power here. Now, this times that x minus one to one half power and that can be cancelled because this right here is like the one to the first power, right? So I will cancel this out with that and you know one half minus one is negative one half which it becomes stay in the denominator here. So this is one half power now, all right? I'm just cancelling this and that and you can do it either way. One minus one half which is positive one half stays on the bottom, right? That's the main thing. The other one, I can do this times that. And this is, again, to the first power. So when you multiply this and that, you get 
3 half power, which is exactly what we got right here. So in the end, let me just put this down. On the top, we have negative 3x to the fourth power plus 4x to the third power plus 1 over 2 right here. Let's write it down first. And then this is to the 1 half power becomes the square root. And you know, this and that together is going to give us x to the fourth power plus 1 to the 3 half power. So they both have the square root just like that. So I'll open that square root. I'll write this down inside x minus 1. And then this third power, I will do the same thing just like that. So x to the fourth power plus 1 to the third power. Whew. So if you think you can take the derivative, you should be able to do things like this. And hopefully you guys all notice that it's not really the calculus step that gets you. It's the algebra that gets the students. So if you want to improve your calculus steps, be sure you work on your algebra, right? Anyway, comment down below and let me know which method, which approach that you like more, right? And also subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. Thank you so much.